such a wonderful opportunity to um, for teachers to have to hear the the thoughts of their students and to be honored by them and the talking about the pillars that they um, that we exemplify in um, honor society. As you already know, that this is especially meaningful honor because teachers are chosen by the seated members of NHS. The students are recognized by this teacher as an exemplary example of the pillar of service for this year. Um, the teacher that has been nominated has taught the importance of giving back to the community through her example and exemplifying the spirit of selflessness through her countless charities and volunteerism. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to give, if you could give a warm welcome to our honorary staff member, Michelle O'Connor. Dearest National Honor students, it is a huge, huge honor for me to stand before you. I feel very humbled and I appreciate so much that you think of me as a model when you think of a person who represents service. I am sure that it was my heritage students from two years ago who put me up here because that year we did really amazing things and I still miss you very much. In addition to our regular academic learning, that year we supported Mayor Vargas's campaign as mayor of Blue Island. We read to Spanish-speaking kids at the library every couple of weeks all year. We tutored grade school kids. We participated at the Beverly Arts Center every week. We did girls group. We did a public library presentation on the true meaning of Cinco de Mayo. You know what I mean. And that year, I was able to help nine of you finance service trips abroad. It was no small feat. We raised over $12,000 in donations and sponsorships, uh, just in our class effort. And with the support of many good Samaritans in our Blue Island community, we paid for nine round trip plane tickets, your food, your lodging, and your travel programs. We proved to ourselves that money is not an obstacle, well, it is an obstacle, but we can beat it. And if you want to do something badly enough, there is always a way. And we've proven that so, so many times. One of the students I would like to mention, and there are many, so please don't, there, there are so many stories, but I will tell you one, um, because she's in the group tonight. Her name's Elizabeth, and um, she is really a perfect example of uh, what it means to go the extra mile. She took so many risks with me that year, and she inspired me so much to be a better teacher. Uh, she had never left home, never been on a plane, and she went to New Orleans over spring break to do hurricane cleanup uh, with three other students. And then in July, she traveled to Costa Rica and worked on an endangered turtle conservation product project. And uh, like I said, we raised all the money ourselves through the generosity of people in the community. So it was very much a once in a lifetime experience for her. And um, I'm just so proud of all the kids who were with me that year working on these projects and, and very inspired. As for my own service, uh, as you know, uh, I've worked abroad and traveled abroad and done service abroad basically my whole life. My, my whole adult life. Sometimes I've taught English abroad, sometimes I've done projects related to the law. Uh, students who studied with me know that I left a good paying job here at District 218 to teach as a volunteer in Latin America. I know people thought I was crazy, but, um, but I did. I took a year off and I worked for free and I worked just as hard as I work here. Um, uh, so what I did was I went down to Columbia, I was looking at schools, then I went to Panama, and I finally settled last year uh, in Peru in a little small Catholic school in the Andes Mountains. Uh, it was about six hours away from the nearest city, four hours of dirt roads. Uh, we were at 11,000 feet above sea level, so high that it's actually difficult to breathe there. And uh, I was teaching English to Indian children Quechua Indian children. Their first language was Quechua, second was Spanish, and I was their English teacher. And uh, I was at this school where teachers were earning in one month of working what I make here at Eisenhower in one day. So imagine that kind of disparity. 
And yet, they were such incredibly beautiful people and so generous with me, and they took me in. I taught English in exchange for my living and my food with them. They couldn't pay me, and even if they could, I wouldn't have accepted money from them because really, they were too poor. But in exchange for my teaching, they hosted me in a monastery, and I lived with priests and nuns connected uh, to the school in a monastery. It was a peaceful, magical, incredible experience where money didn't matter because nobody had any. So we didn't even think about it. Um, people also had no access to medical care there. They had very limited access to education, limited resources in general. Their school had no copy machine. They had no copies. Um, they, in fact, only had cold water. And to have hot water, they would have to boil it. They had nothing. And yet, they were so incredibly happy and so kind. And even to strangers, they didn't know me when I arrived. But they had no depression, no obesity, no suicide, none of these crazy issues that we have here. They loved music, they loved the company of people, they respected nature. Uh, they only ate natural foods because everything came from their gardens and their farms. They had no flaming hot Cheetos, nothing out of the package. Everybody walked everywhere, so they were healthy, they were happy. And it's a curious benefit when you are a volunteer abroad that your health improves immediately because of these, these factors, natural food and walking and, and a much slower pace. So the message there is that sometimes to have less is to have more. Um, and that's something I learned there for sure. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how does this relate to me? And I would say you have so many opportunities to participate in service trips, especially when you go to college. And the world so, so needs young people to be that difference, to make a difference. And when you go to college, you will probably be on some kind of financial aid program, and you should know that that financial aid will cover your expenses to go abroad. So don't, I just don't want to hear, like, I don't have any money, I can't do it. I don't want to hear, I can't. You can. Come and talk to me if you need to, but, but it can be done. Um, and study abroad offices, offices are so eager to help you. They'll set you up with families. You can study anything you want. You can always teach English abroad. You can do all sorts of environmental projects, saving species, cleaning areas that are contaminated. There's so much need. So don't be afraid. Uh, anyone who's done service in another country will tell you, as Dr. Rauch just said, that, that they were far more enriched than the service they provided. And that's certainly how I felt myself, that, um, that I got so much back from it. And I hope and encourage you to do the same, because you will you get something so special and meaningful. You can't buy it. You can't go to Kmart and buy this. You have to live it. So I would encourage you to set aside the books and the computers, because that stuff can only go so far. And there comes a point where to really comprehend the world and comprehend who you are in it, you have to live. And this means living hand in hand with people of different cultures, of different religions, and having meaningful relationships with them, and experiencing their lives with them without fear. Don't be afraid to try these things. So you might end up at a local bullfight. And the bull might get out, and he might chase you down the road. It's okay. Jump in a bush. You'll be okay. This happened to me. Or you might, you might be at a religious ceremony, and they're celebrating the goddess of the earth. Go with it. You will love it. These are all common in Peru. Um, but whatever it is, I really encourage you, as the beautiful young people you are, to set aside those cell phones and take those headphones off. And all that technology glitz, at some point you need to set it aside and live with passion. Discover these new perspectives that I'm talking about. So, best of luck, National Honor students. 
and thank you very much for thinking of me. I'm just so, so humbled. I am very excited to see what you go on to do. I know that some of you will stay in contact with me. That means everything to me. And it means a lot for me to be a part of your journey. And I also want to say a quick little shout out to some of the parents in Spanish. Hay unos muy queridos padres aquí y gracias por apoyarme. Thank you so much for supporting me.